Morning Friendship House of Prayer Baptist Church. It is a truly an honor and a privilege to be here with you this morning and to share with you. I am Reverend Tina Ford here as I'm an associate minister here at Friendship and we just thank God for you this morning. We are looking forward to sharing the word with you. So sit back, enjoy, and relax in the word of God with us this morning. And at this time, we're gonna just go to the throne right now and have a word with the Lord in prayer. If you would just join me right at this moment. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come before your throne of mercy and grace this morning just to say thank you for another day. Lord, we thank you for our health and our strength. Lord, we thank you for just being able to stand and say that you are still God who sits high and looks low. Now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will just allow this rhema word to go out, oh God, and that it shall be a blessing to somebody on today, Lord. And Father, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. But most of all, we thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. God, we praise you, we honor you, and we give glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Today we will be coming from out of the book of Ecclesiastes. We'll be coming from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and we will be starting at the first verse. So if you would just please open your Bibles this morning with me and just go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes. The third chapter, starting at the first verse. Amen. If you at home and found it, say hallelujah. If you have it, just shout up into the heavens. Wait for me, but I'm going to pause for a moment and give you a minute to find it. Amen. Ecclesiastics, the third chapter, starting at the first verse. We're going to start at the first verse, and I am coming from the uh, New Living Translation, so it may read a little different than your King James on today. But the Word of God talks about the time of mystery, and it says here, it says, There is an occasion for every, and a time for every activity under the heaven. Verse 2 says, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to avoid embracing. A time to search and a time to count as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. In preparing for today's message, Today, I, I was sitting as I was reading and I was studying over, over the Word of God, and, and I went into my own thoughts on how I felt about things and the way that they are right now. And I'm sure that all of you can agree with me that we're not real happy with the way things are but there's nothing we can really do about it. So we have to learn how to live within the time and season that we're in. Which brings me for a, a theme on today for what we wanna speak about is recognizing your season. Because everyone is not always going through the same season when it comes spiritual and when it comes to you and your life, your spiritual life, your everyday life, 
And it's a part of getting to know yourself and getting to know your personal self, whether it be spiritually or not. It's important to know yourself in the season that you're in. So, so my thoughts instantly, when I went into my thoughts with this, they instantly took me as it would do anyone to the COVID-19, amen? And how it has uh, not only came and carried out what we call the commands of the enemy, because the Bible says that the enemy's job and his purpose is to come, kill, steal, and destroy. Well, we've seen this, we're seeing this all around us. But I ask God to give me an opportunity to see things the way he wanted me to see things because I, I, I don't wanna keep seeing the negativity in all of these things when God is still yet alive and still on my side because I'm still on his side, amen? And so, so in my thoughts, I says, Lord, I need you to help me. Help me to see this. Help me to recognize, you know, where I'm at and, and what's going on and, and, and how to continue to get through this because, you know, I can only speak for myself, but we, but, you know, going through this, there's been times I've lost myself. And I've had to stop and find myself because we get so wrapped up into what's going on around us and what we hear and, and what's going on. And then, you know, the losses and, and, and the, the everything that's going on, the, ramp, the rampages of shootings and, and, and everything. It's like craziness everywhere. But God says, peace be still and know that I am God. And I'm still in control. Everything is not the devil. God says, I'm a jealous God. And I got to do something to get some attention because the people, my people have gotten so hard hearted and, and stiff necked that they are not even fearful of me anymore. God says, I want you to fear me so that you will honor me, respect me, believe in me, give to me your time, your mind. And so, because this is the type of people that we have become, he had to come with some heavy stuff. And that's why man can't figure out what it is and how to fix it because God is not ready for it to be fixed because he's still trying to get some of our attention to let us know what season we in because we all trying to operate out of the same bag of potatoes and there's not that many in there. Amen, amen, amen. And so, so in my other, in my thoughts with this, you know, and so instantly I, I, I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. For, for showing me in that instant how to regather my thoughts and regather myself because, you know, God, God is not about wanting us to live in misery and in, 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 um, in mystery, you know, outside of him because the mystery of him is what we're supposed to be looking for. And so, and he will show you the mystery at the appropriate time. But, but, I said, thank you, Lord, for changing my thoughts. And so now I look at COVID. I look at all the things that's going on around me. And I'm like, you know what, God? I got to find you in the midst of this. And, and, and I'm finding him in the midst of it. He says, because when you start chasing after me and looking for me in everything, you will find me. You will find peace. You will find love. You will find joy. You will find happiness. He said, I told you in my word that the world didn't give it to you and the world can't take it away. And so why do you walk around here as if I've left you? And God says, I've not gone anywhere except waiting here for you to come back to me because you're out there running crazy with the rest of those 
that don't believe, and you said you're a believer. So, so now I'm sitting real quietly and humbly because I just got my first uh, whooping. Because he's telling me we as believers cannot allow ourselves to believe and act the same way the world does. Because the Bible has already forecasted it for us. Ecclesiastics, and what I love about Ecclesiastics is it's a book of wisdom. And it's a book of wisdom uh, uh, literature. You know, so in other words, it's a learning book. And it's a book that, that if we allow it, it will actually help us understand God more and better. It'll help us understand when he means what he means when he says things are meaningless. When he says that I am meaningless. Because he wants us to see ourselves as nothing. As nothing. And so here Ecclesiastes says, Ecclesiastes is a wisdom literature meaning that it is a part of the Bible that is especially concerned with helping readers cope with the practical, philosophical issues of life. That's what Ecclesiastics is doing for us. And then it tells me it, says it has the root in wisdom, in, in the literature that comes from, you know, and that's why we don't like to, to talk about them and we don't hear a whole lot about it, but Egypt and Babylon, those things there is where some of this literature comes from, amen? And it says there, but he says, it's, but it's, it's like the book of Proverbs, if you would say, and Ecclesiastics. You get answers to questions out of it. You get truth out of it. Now, you really have to be ready and, and spiritually minded in when you go into this book to read it because it truly is taking you to another level of understanding. And so you got to be sure about what you're sure about and know what you know going into it because Ecclesiastics will talk to you and it will talk back to you. It will engage you and it will nullify you to all of the meaningful things that God wants you to know for your life. There's four points that I want to hit real fast and then we're going to go. Ecclesiastics purpose shows us that since we and our works are fruitile, this is destined to perish. In other words, what I'm saying is our works are destined to perish. Why? Because nothing lasts forever but Jesus. Amen? And so it says we must waste not our lives trying to justify our existence with the pursuits of stuff that simply mean nothing. What are you talking about, Reverend Ford? Thank you for asking because what I'm talking about is how Ecclesiastics examines major endeavors of our life so that we can understand the reality of death. The book warns us about the pursuit of several different purposes in our lives. And these are things that we need to be looking at and examining because if, you start, if we start doing that, we ain't got time to do nothing else but chase after the Lord. And one of them is, start chasing after your intellectual accomplishments or seeking them and finding them. You probably already have accomplished them, but we've never taken time to see it. Why? Because we never allow ourselves to recognize we're in that season that this is time for me to be looking into myself and searching myself and seeing what I need to do to fix myself. Number two, he says wealth and luxury. 
Wealth does not give life of purpose. More than that, those who pursue riches waste their lives in bitterness, anxiety, and toil. Money does not matter. It does not affirm that, that we have to have it. We've allowed ourselves to affirm that. The strategy for maintaining is simple. Trusting and believing. And you'll have more riches than your pockets can hold. Political stuff we got to be careful with because it can bring a corrupting power with it. Religion, we got that zeal. But Ecclesiastics tells us that we should not try to impress God, but we should wear ourselves out blessing God. So in all that I'm saying here today and all that I'm sharing with us today is it's simple as it is. Those are all the things that, that can hinder us up in our pursuit of, of one season to another. But God says in here, he says, but in all that you do, he says, enjoy your life. Enjoy what you're doing in your life, but in all that you do, trust in me. And lean not to your own understanding. And then put me first in all that you do. Because when you can recognize that God has given you an everlasting joy, then you'll know that when God says uh, it's time for you to go from one season into the next season, he's never going to leave you where you can't make it in on your own. He says, because I've already cut the pathway out for you. But the word is not trying to condemn us. The word is trying to help us. But God says, I need my people to come back to me. They don't fear me anymore. And he says right here, fear God. This is an honest humility before God arises from an awareness of our weakness and sin. It includes awareness of our independence. It includes awareness of our dependence in him. And remember, the fact is, he's the only judge. You don't have to worry about trying to impress nobody else because you've already impressed who counts. Now in my closing, I just wanna say that Trouble don't last, always. And God has a plan for us. And God is looking for a people that he can trust, that he can depend on, to continue to walk and not be weary, to continue to just walk and not faint, to, to continue to just run until they can't run no more. But if I was you today, I would just ask God to let me see things the way that he wants me to see things. I would ask God to help me to make my choices wisely, God, to make myself recognize when I'm going from one season to another season. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but all you got to do is get in the face of God and begin to talk to him. And he says, you don't have to say a whole lot because I know the desire of your heart. All you have to do is come to me as honestly and humbly as you know how. So if you want your life to be spared from the COVID-19, 20, and whatever one is coming, God says, cover yourself in me. Cover yourself in my word. Allow me to let you know one season to another season because I'll move you as it needs to be moved. And you will recognize when I'm moving you. It will be no surprise. Today is your day, is your day 
So go to God and ask him to help you. Ask him to lead you and guide you. Ask him to take full control, to cover your mind, to blot out all of the things that you see and, and that's causing anxiety in you and that's causing stress in you, that's causing your body to ache, the pains and, and all, and if everything that is just coming up against you, I dare you to give it to Jesus by just asking him, Lord, begin to show me what it is you need me to be doing in the midst of this pandemic. Don't think for a moment that we are outside of the building that we come together in for nothing. One thing that can happen is they can take us out of the buildings but they can't take Jesus out of our hearts. And if you've never been close to him before, this is a good time to get close, snuggle all the way up with him because we need him now more than we've ever needed him in our lives. And we need to be able to understand his language Trust me, it's not as scary as it seems once you're looking at it through the eyes of the Lord. You can sleep, you can walk, and not look like somebody's gonna just throw COVID on you. God bless you. I pray you got something from this word today. I pray that you were blessed as I pray, there may be somebody out there who did not know the Lord as a pardon of their sins or that knows God but has gotten away from God and during all of the pandemic and everything that's going on, you've lost yourself. Just bow your head and put your hand in the air at this time as we pray and ask God to restore back what we've lost. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you right now, God. And Lord, I'm praying for each and every person that at the sound of my voice, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that is sitting in their homes, oh God, and has raised their hand, oh God, and that has confessed, oh God, to you that they need you, God, that they have left you, that they stepped outside of you, Lord, and Lord God, even for the one that did not know you in the pardon of his sin, that has said, yes, I want to know. Lord, we thank you right now for them. And Father, we ask right now, even right where they are, that you will just put your loving arms around them right now, God, and touch them right now, God, and let them know that you got them, oh God. And Father, we thank you in advance for what you have already done. We thank you for what you're going to do. But most of all, we thank you for still being with us and for still allowing us to have our health and strength, oh God, for allowing us to still be able to share your word, oh God, with somebody, oh God, with those that are looking for a word from you. But Lord, we ask now that you just bless those that are sick and shut in, oh God. Bless the bereaved families, oh God. Father, we send out special requests for uh, Reverend Donnie Cadell, oh God, and his family and his extended family, oh God, and Sister Ann, oh God, and her family and her mother, oh God, and, and their loss, oh God. And I ask that you will just touch right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Comfort that family, comfort her, oh God. Father, we thank you now that you are the we know that you're there. We know that you are there. We know that you have her wrapped up, Lord. And Lord God, we thank you for the uh, some of our other ministers, oh God, that has been ill, oh God. And we thank you, Lord, that they are prayerfully getting better, Lord God. I ask that you continue to keep your hands around them and all the rest of our church family and friends, Lord. We ask that you just continue to just keep us. Pull us closer together, God, as we are separated. But Lord, bring our hearts back together and closer together. We thank you now. We bless you. We love you. And we give you praise. 
In Jesus' name, I thank you for tuning in this morning with us and for giving us an opportunity to come into your home and share the word of God with you. I pray once again that something has been said and something has been done that will bless you and give you a reason to stand up and give God the glory, give God the praise, and give him the honor that's due to him, and then go out and tell somebody, God fixed me, and he did it all by himself. Now, God bless you, and have a wonderful day, and go and be blessed. Amen.